Okay, another video here for you. Here's the short rubber for lionfish tip where you'll put these three together and uh, this will give you a shorter length for those guys. When you, you don't really need a freaking long ass pole for lionfish. You can put the damn spear almost right up on them. You can probably just jab them without a rubber. That's so stupid. But anyway, so that's that rubber. Then the other rubber I made, I put the loop in on. That was interesting. So you got full length with the with the grip. Don't worry about which tip you got on front. But you'll have all the poles together, and you'll have the grip on the very front, and then you'll put it in there. And then if you put this in front of the grip, have three behind the grip. And then you can put your hand in here for a different power setting. And you can mix and match. And if you want less power or more power, you can. there's all kinds of combos for you to screw around with. So anyway, that's kind of the design process for the rubber. So that's out of there. So you're back to the... We'll get these all wiped down. I know they're getting all dusty and dirty out here on the bench. So there's the back side that you tie your rubber on. Actually, let me do this just because we're doing it. Keep filming here. So you want to put the rubber in. That should be obvious. Stick the thing through. Mm -hmm. Take the rubber and slide it back through here. Right. I've had somebody actually ask me that one. Not many. Maybe like one in ten years. But anyway, it's in the video. <laughs> <laughs> so then there's all the pole sections you got the grip here which I actually bought the knurls for this for a different job and um, I put these in because my damn hands were wearing out tightening up all these joints and actually you can you can actually crank it it gives you a better leverage especially with your wet hands and wet gloves that you can crank the thing together better not just the o-ring holding it tight but that extra grip and torque will really help hold it together. It's hard to get it apart if you're not on the grip. So anyway, that's a so the, this little knurl is part of the joint tensioner mm -hmm. as we evolved in make it trying to make the pole better each time. Okay, I'm going to give you extra O-rings for these. Nobody really uh, replaces them from what I've seen. I've given extras to everybody. Nobody said, "Hey, dude, I need more O-rings." When you go to dig the O-ring out of here, you can use a pick. There's a little hook. Oh, it's got a bunch of crap on it. Got a little O-ring pick that you can dig it out, but it's easy to tear them up. But these are, I got the right material, so these should last you a long time, unless you lay it out in the sun with the UV rays. That'll tear it up. But then the water, if you wash it, these should last a long, long time. So, But I got spares anyway. <clears throat> Here's the, uh, the hole here. Most people don't care about this clip because you're in Florida and you can see well, but out here in dirty California, <laughs> if you're trying to stow your pole, you can just hang it on the rubber and it points straight down. But out here we got bad viz, so you're coming up and you run this sucker into your brain pan because it's hanging down. So then that's why I came up with the clip. You clip this. Now it holds your pole, so the smart end is sticking up in the air. Mm -hmm. And you also got a nice grip on it, keeps the rubber brakes or whatever. Okay, this uh, that's the stow clip. Uh, I got a mark on my brain pan that from one of these guys to help me with this idea. It's one-handed. So you can clip it. This is not for fish. Some people think this is a fish stringer. I guess if you're hunting minnows. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, that's the paralyzer. Um, how much to it? I got a conical twist in it, where you'll notice. Some guys think that's all for hydrodynamics and all this kind of great stuff, but no, it's because it gives me a more consistent alignment for the tip to in my fixturing. So I'm not going to show you that in the video, but okay, here's your other tip, the flopper. The grip's on this one because you're going to be running shorter and you can just leave this section out. This in the front. You can also put this 
with everything else stacked in the front if you want a longer pole for shooting whatever else you're shooting on the reef there. Okay, here's your flopper. Those videos of Mike were really pretty good. So watching him and his technique um, is worth a, you know, that's worth watching again to what he does. So anyway, here's the tip. I got this little indent right here. So you can see the flopper's loose right here. And then when the fish kicks it out, it'll latch on this side of the tip and get stuck out. So once your fish is in here, it's not going to just fold down. And slip off. And, and possibly, it still probably won't slip off, but still. If you shoot them too, you get the fish in there, pull the fish down this way and grab it in here and hold it so you don't lose your fish. Some guys like to shoot the fish. They barely get it through the fish. They leave the pole dangling way out in front. They're holding the rubber and they're swinging it around like they don't, you know, then the fish falls off and they're like, damn, the thing didn't hold the fish on. I'm like, well, yeah, what are you thinking, man? Push the fish all the way through, get your hand around it, grab the fish, get your fingers in its gills. You know, if you want that baby and you're starving, man, you're going to be a little more anxious on grabbing it. You'll see Mike pushes his fish up in the video. I turn this end down, and the thing there is I'm putting a, a tri-cut on it. And this is plenty strong enough to be cut down, but you've got less material here that you have to mess with out in the boat or wherever to sharpen it. Then you can take your stone or whatever and you can put your edge on it because you will dull that knife edge. Now you got less to work with versus a big honking try cut so that's why I turned those down and we'll put a I'll put a rubber cap on top of that for you cut those off of there okay now the I got this tune for you about where I, I like it it's maybe just a it actually feels pretty good actually it was tighter last night but you'll see the rivet is pushed through and you can see where I, I rounded and pinged this guy over you're going to want to make sure this is dialed in for you in the future as you start using it more. So the options you got is you, you don't want the pin to be loose on the wing. You don't want it. You want to, if the pin is bent, it's going to hold this in. It's going to be hard to adjust. You want it to be. You want the flopper to be bent around the oval to hold some tension. Then you got this, which really makes it a lot easier for the indent. But the other thing you can do is you can pound this rivet back and forth. You can hit it on this side with a hammer, you can hit it on this side, and you can push it back and forth and make sure it's loosened up, it's not full of sand and dirt and crap or whatever you got in there. I got the whole tolerance pretty tight so there's not much room. But anyway, if it's sticking or messing up on you, those are some of the options you got. Move the pin back and forth, spray oil on it, you know, bend this over to the sides, and you can dink with it. So keep make sure you got that dialed in because it will get messed up at some point. That's just part of the game. I put this little barb on the end. A little flare here. You can adjust that flare out a little bit more or down a little bit if you want. I kind of put it where I like it, but you got that adjustment and you can do that there. Okay, these are uh, for tooling, for alignment. Some guys think this was a hydrodynamic a feature for speed in the water as they're overthinking it. So, no. This is for aligning the wing when I do my forming process. That's all that's for. Um, anyway, I hate to lie to people. They're like, oh man, that's probably for, oh man, ultra super hydrodynamics. Okay, that's it. You got the hole here for your clip here for this pole. Um, we'll have a goodie bag for you. Hopefully this uh, makes sense. And uh, we'll get it out the door. Okay, that's it. Uh, hopefully this video helps. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, done.